In the first episode of this series, we compared living organisms to things that are not quite alive. In the second episode, I showed you the most basic divisions of life between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. In this video, we'll move through a few successive clades early in the evolution of eukarya. This particular sequence of a half dozen evolutionary stages occurs over a billion year period in the Proterozoic Eon, beginning just over two billion years ago and ending roughly one billion years ago. It's rather like looking at human history. The most ancient times were an age where little or nothing changed from generation to generation. The way you lived and the tools you used were the same as your grandparents' grandparents. But the closer you move to modern times, the faster things change, and it keeps accelerating, such that there have been more significant changes just over your lifetime, just within this century so far, than there ever was in any given millennia of the Neolithic period. Evolutionary history is much the same way. It started out very slow, taking close to a couple billion years just to get from prokaryotes to eukaryotes. And now we're going to look at the next billion years after that. This was a time when vast algae blooms raised oxygen levels in the ocean, but not yet in the air. There were no plants or animals. Nothing lived on the land, and the only things in the sea were either prokaryotes or what we used to call protists. In previous videos, we also mentioned how classification should always be monophyletic, but it hasn't always been. In the 1600s, Antony van Leeuwenhoek discovered what were thought to be single-celled animals. Actually, there's no such thing as a single-celled animal. Animals are, by definition, multicellular. In contrast, plants, fungus, and algae can either be single-celled or multicelled, and they got that way independently. As soon after Leeuwenhoek's discovery, anyone with a microscope could see what was then thought to be a whole new category of life. And once it was realized that molds, fungi, algae, and such were something different than plants, and that protists were something else entirely, then they knew that everything wasn't just a choice between animal, mineral, or vegetable anymore. So taxonomists invented a few more kingdoms of life. Archaea, bacteria, animalia, also known as metazoa, plantae, fungi, and protista. Except that protista was created as a miscellaneous junk drawer of whatever didn't fit into the other kingdoms. Now, prior to Darwin, no one realized the possibility that some of these other kingdoms actually grew out of this one. There are protists that look like the primitive beginnings of fungi, and others that look and act like animals, and others that are apparently basal to plants despite some structural or reproductive differences in each case. There were microscopic browsing grazers, predators, parasites, and photosynthetic autotrophs just like animals, plants, and fungus on the macroscopic scale. Protista turned out to be a truly ancient and thus wildly diverse grouping. When I was a young man in college, they still referred to Protus as a separate kingdom, but they already knew that was wrong. Now, back then, they said it could have been a dozen kingdoms all by itself, and they still haven't worked out exactly how to divide and define some of them. But because Protista was paraphyletic, it has since been dissolved and dispersed throughout the eukaryote cladogram. This image is from the Phylogeny Explorer project. As you can see, the first fork in our family tree is between biconts and unicons. Think of it as the difference between bicorns and unicorns. Of course, the real difference is whether it has a double cont or one unique cont, meaning whether it has one or two flagella. Now, while it is possible that unicons came first, some scientists think biconts and unicons were both derived from excavata, which is considered to be the oldest of the flagellates and thus the oldest of all of the eukaryotes. The reason being that, that some excavates have mitochondria and some don't, implying that the acquisition of endosymbiotic bacteria happened in the excavates lineage and was subsequently inherited by the rest of eukarya, which is divided between plants and algae on the bicont side with animals and fungi on the unicont side. Excavata is in the middle because of organisms like euglena, solar-powered swimmers with traits of both plants and animals. And these were once thought to predate the emergence of sex, but there is genetic evidence that some excavates are capable of meiosis and thus sexual reproduction. Although prokaryotes engage in a conjugal gene transfer that is the basis of sex, they don't have meiotic recombination like eukaryotes do. We're going to take a left at this fork and focus on unicons, the half of eukarya that can't make their own food and thus have to eat other organisms. Many cells travel using cilia. Others have flagella, including a few amoebae. And those cells with only one flagella will either pull themselves along from the front or they'll use it to push from behind. And those unicons with a single posterior flagellum are called opisticons. 
although most epistochont cells don't have flagellum except on their reproductive spores or sperm. The biggest changes concern the smallest parts, the initial fundamental or developmental structures. And once in place, these are also the hardest things to change. So we are unicons because our sperm cells have only one flagella, and we're epistochons because that flagella pushes instead of pulls. The next clade in the sequence is holozoa, which contains all epistochons that are more closely related to animals than to fungi. And if you look here at Tourettesporia, you'll see another example of transitional forms being organisms with traits of both fungi and animals. But we're following this branch to Philozoa, consisting of Metazoa, Coanoflagellates, and Philisteria. This last group includes the species Caspasporia, an amoebic organism with a complete set of genes involved in sexual reproduction. This shows that Caspasporia can switch from sexual to asexual reproduction and thus places the origin of sex at over a billion years ago. These are unicellular organisms that are so closely related to animals that its genome is under study to evaluate the transition from single cell to multicells. Because in the other fork, to a poikazoia, there are coanoflagellates, which can be unicellular or they can exist as communal clusters. As individuals, they look like modified sperm with a collar of fronds for catching and filtering food. As a communal cluster, they look remarkably like coanocytes, part of the food filtration chamber in sponges, the most basal of all animals. In other animals, these cells have apparently been adapted into epithelial cells, so they show evidence of cell differentiation, but also gametogenesis, which is why the first animals reproduce through a release of sperm and eggs. Though sexual reproduction is a feature that has been turned on and off again in some species. Of course, coanoflagellates are also genetically basal to animals, which are their sister clade. Metazoa is the clade of animals, but there is more to being an animal than just being made of multiple cells. The other defining characteristic is because animals can't make their own food, they must ingest other organisms in a digestive tract in order to survive. That's the scientific definition. But if you look it up in colloquial sources, you'll see that despite the errors in common dictionaries, humans are still definitely animals. And a lot of people have a real problem accepting that they're animals, sometimes for religious reasons. But even the Bible says that people are animals and that to believe otherwise is vanity. So the question is, regardless whether you think we have evolved from animals, once you realize that you came from a gamete cell with a single posterior flagella, and you've grown from that into an organism composed of millions of nucleic cells, and that you have an internal digestive tract to boot so that you meet all of the required criteria, do you accept that according to the biological definition, and even the common colloquial definition, that you are an animal? <laughs>